So let's remember what we had to think about last time. We connected this idea of a quantity, uh, you know, an amount of stuff, like it might be time or money or uh, how much sugar you're putting in a cup of tea. That's a quantity, an amount of stuff. And then we talked about proportions, which is, hey, take some of that. Not all of it, just take some amount of it, a proportion. And so we looked at proportions of quantities last time. This is a proportion of a quantity. 25% of one day. What length of time would that be? 25% of one day. Yeah, Jessica? One day is 24 hours. One day is roughly 24 hours. So. so order of 24 Okay, so you've done, and uh, maybe you've been thinking similarly in your brain, right? You've done a bit of a conversion here, right? We said percentages, fractions, you can use either of them to describe a proportion, that's fine, same thing. And what you've converted this one day into is a different kind of unit, one that was a little easier to work with, 24 hours. So these are smaller time units, that means there's more of them in the same amount of time, and so it's easier to break up. I suppose we could have, I don't know why I put a quote mark there, I suppose we could have broken up into minutes or seconds, but that's a bit overkill, isn't it? Um, we can use this, what is a quarter of 24 hours? It's, yeah? Six. six hours, very good. That's six hours. So importantly, a proportion of a quantity is just a different kind of quantity, a smaller one, usually. Now today what we're going to focus on is the same idea but in the reverse order. And in fact, you kind of just did it just now. Instead of thinking of a proportion of a quantity, we're going to think of, uh, sorry, wrong way around quantities um, as proportions. Let me give you an example and you see what I mean. So, here's something we could ask, which is to think about these same things but in the other order. I could say, and in fact I'd love you to write this with me, what fraction, so I'm asking for a proportion, and then I'm going to give you a quantity. What fraction of a day is three hours. So same kind of situation, right? Time, fractions, but I'm asking the question in the reverse direction. Now Jessica, you already gave me an answer very helpfully, so Mary, can you give me a suggestion? Three hours of 24 hours. Okay, very good. Because we are thinking, and I'd love you if you've got a color there, right, to highlight what the whole unit is. The whole unit in this case is a day. Do you see that? If I had asked, for instance, what fraction of a week or what fraction of a month is three hours, then our answer would be totally different, wouldn't it? But in this case, we would say the fraction is three hours divided by a day. But Merrick helpfully said, instead of a day, I should say 24 hours. Very good. Now, you can see here on the top and the bottom, my numerator and my denominator, I've got the same unit here, hours with hours. So they're in fact, just like with normal fractions, you can cancel them, you get 3 over 24. Can I write it any simpler than 3 over 24? Bravi. 1 eighth. 1 eighth. One eighth. Perfect. So you can see here, because we are given a quantity, and we're asked a proportion in the end. It's not an eighth of an hour or an eighth of a day, it's just one eighth. That's the fraction. Okay. Let me give you another quick uh, example. With this time, let's talk about percentages. Um, does anyone know roughly, don't have to be exact to the individual, but roughly how many students are there in our school? There are roughly 2,000. So I'm going to say, what percentage of our school is 450 students. Okay, we're going to ask the same question as before. What is the whole unit? Before it was a day, what's the whole unit here? It's going to be, uh, uh, it's a school, our school, which is 2,000 students, right? So I'm going to highlight that again. One of the most important parts of answering any questions like this is, you've got to know what the whole unit is. If I asked you what percentage of Cherrybrook, which is a whole lot more people than just our school, then your answer would be different. And this of course is 2,000 students. We'll just use that approximation for now. I think we're just a bit over, but that's okay. So again, in my answer, I'm going to say on the numerator, what number do I put up the top? 450, thank you very much. That's the quantity that I'm sort of focusing on. It's not just 450, it's 450 students. And then what's on the bottom? 
yeah, the whole unit is on the bottom, 2,000 students. And even though I'm getting the same uh, object, students here and hours here on the top and the bottom, I like to write both there just to remind myself because sometimes you'll be handed different units and they'll mix together. So what I've got here, I can write this without the students involved, 450 divided by 2,000. Okay, now let's think carefully for a second. Um, when you look at this, you could probably think of some nice things to divide through to simplify this, make a simpler fraction, okay? I want to land on a percentage. So what would I like, what would I like my denominator to be if I want a percentage? Anyway. Or do you want to suggest a different thing I'm rather than answer my question? Okay, so I could multiply this by 100 over 1 and that would have a percentage on the end. But remember, percentage, this is where the symbol comes from, right? It, it literally comes from over, see those two little circles there? It's from over 100, that's where they came from, right? So we would like the denominator to be equal to 100, right? This is not 100 yet, it's 2000. So what do I do to this denominator to get it toward 100? Louise? Um, you could cross out both the zeros. Okay, I can cross out both the zeros. So I'm going to cancel. What is that, by the way? What am I dividing the top and bottom by to cross out a zero? Divided by 10. Um, now what can I do to go one more step? Oh my God. Yeah, okay, Jessica, go ahead. So since it's 200, yep. you want to make it 100. Yep. You can divide both the um, top and bottom by 2. Let's do that. Divide both the top and the bottom by 2. Now you will notice this is a little bit unusual because 45 is not an even number, is it? So it won't divide evenly, but that's okay. What is 45 divided by 2? How would we write it? 22 and a half. 22 and a half. Usually we don't like writing fractions on fractions, but why is this okay? Why is this okay? Leah, what are you thinking? Yeah, we're turning this part into the percentage. So in fact, I've just run out of space, so I'm just going to continue. You can keep on going down your page. I would write this as 22 and a half percent. That's what the division by 100 is. Um, you could write this as a, a decimal. You could write it as 22.5. Both of those would be equivalent. Does this make sense? Okay. So we're going to look at some examples of this. Can I ask you please to open up your laptops to 606? You can see I've jotted down a few questions over on the right hand side already. And Didia, so here do you, do you need to take this outside? Okay, that's all right. Don't want to get in the middle of your domestic, that's all right. 606 is where we're looking. And if we need to borrow a textbook, please go ahead. No. <laughs> Okay, now as, as that loads up, I'm just going to um, uh, kill some time while your computers are waking up. I just want to highlight the two really important things that are all on the board that you need to have in your mind as you have a go through this. Okay? The first thing is something that was all the way back to what Jessica said when we were having a look at this question here. When you're thinking about quantities and proportions together, because they're quantities of things like time or people or a weight or an amount of money, what you really need to get is your units talking the same thing. Okay? So please highlight that for me. You can see when I think about units like so and so and down here, you notice when I'm talking about quantities and proportions together, I want to be talking about the same units. Okay? So I'm just going to highlight that over here. Same units. Often the question will be polite to you and will hand everything to you already in the same units. And that's nice, isn't it? But it might not be. Okay? The second thing that I want to really highlight for you is what I've got colored in orange. What was the main thing I kept asking you when I had a look at these two questions? What's the orange underlined stuff? It's the, it's the, it's the whole amount, isn't it? Right? The whole amount here is a day. That's what we were comparing to. The whole amount here is our school, 2,000 of us. So that's what we're comparing to. I'd love you to start off. We're actually, even though this is what I've assigned you to do, can you all just have a look at question four with me? Question four. This is the first question I have not assigned. I just want us to look at it together. Read question four, just the wording. What's the whole amount? There's three numbers that I can see there, but only one of them is the whole amount. Which one is it? 
25 students. You can see in a class of 25 students. Now usually the whole amount will be the biggest number that you see, but not always, okay? Have a look down to, float your eyes down to question six. Question six, World Cup cricket final. Yeah. Look carefully. Which one is the whole amount? Have a look at question six. The World Cup Cricket Final, let's read it together. It attracted 86,000 people to the game, but 94,500 tickets were sold before the match. So when it asks what fraction of the sold tickets were used, what's the whole amount? The whole amount is it's, it's the 94,500. Number one, number one you can see because it's bigger. Number two, there's an even more important cue because I'm going to show you in a second why sometimes it's not bigger, right? It's, the, it's in part A. It says what fraction of, and then it says the sold tickets. Now have a look at my, um, my questions here on the board. Can you look up for a second? See how it says what fraction of, and then what follows is whatever the whole amount is. What percentage of? our school and that's what signals to you okay now just look up I just want to give you an example you don't need to write this down but for instance I could say mm, just eyeballing it okay I could say there is a class with 18 boys and 12 girls this is not us but it's close enough okay which of these numbers if I said to you you know some proportion of the class which of these numbers is the whole amount um, ah, now in this case, it's neither of these numbers, is it? I actually have to add them together and get 30 students, right? So you have to be really careful with the numbers. I'm sure you can operate on them. You've got a calculator to do most of that, but you need to think carefully before you answer one, okay?